This is Neil Schneider for MTBS TV at CES 2011. I'm joined by Patrick Bullio, Manager of Business Development for NVIDIA 3D Vision. Welcome to the program, Patrick. Thank you, Neil. Now, I understand congratulations are in order. I'm, I'm looking at all these, these uh, screens showing video games. Why is it displayed like this? Well, we reached a milestone. We now have more than 500 games that have been approved to work with 3D Vision. And that's quite a big number because uh, this is a lot of game compared to some of our competition uh, solutions. And also we're using here so the 27-inch 3D displays, which is also the highest resolution that we have on the PC side. And those Acer display also has the uh, 3D emitter integrated inside of the display, which helps with reducing the cost a little bit and also helps on the desktop space. Okay, can you explain a little bit more detail for people who aren't familiar. Uh, first off, I know we'll talk about why these glasses are special in particular, but maybe just explain about your glasses, how they work, and why it's important that there's an emitter in the monitor. Yes, so those are glasses that are what we call active shutter glasses. The reason they're like this is that because we want to have the full resolution in each of the eyes as opposed to the passive glasses solutions that are on the market where the display kind of filters, the uh, has the, the information combined and the glasses filters each of the images by themselves using losing kind of half the resolution. Resolution. With active shutter glasses, you have full resolution for each eyes, but it requires a communication between the display and the glasses, and this is why there is an emitter on the display. And those glasses, they kind of listen to the emitter and they shut each of the eyes when it's the right image that's being displayed on the display. Okay, so for I'll give you an example. For the 3D vision glasses I have, there's a separate emitter that you plug into a USB port on the computer. It's yep. like a little triangle on your desk. Yes. So, if I'm understanding correctly, is this a case where the emitter's in the display itself? Correct. Instead of having a standalone uh, little object on your table, the wire goes directly to your display using this USB cable from the PC, and it's kind of next to the camera that some of the displays I was on a notebook has. It's a small little emitter that can talk to your glasses. And by default, the consumer glasses, they have, they use the IR technology, which is a line of sight uh, communication between the glasses and the display. Uh, now we have a new technology, the uh, 3D Vision Pro glasses. They use the RF technology, which has some advantages. For example, you can have multiple glasses uh, connected to multiple PCs next to each other without necessarily having interference between each of those. So those are the 3D Vision Pro glasses. So what I'm gathering is uh, the Pro would be more appropriate, I know by name, uh, for professionals, but uh, like, like if you're a gamer, the traditional 3D Vision glasses are great, but if you go to the Pro level, I take it you have more uh, advantages in, in what way exactly? Uh, so there's also some support on the software side that are uh, for some of the uh, professional applications that our uh, Quadro team are investing energy to help some of the developer. So the, the glasses also come with some, some kind of level driver level that are used for some of the professional applications. Excellent. Now, I, I know we mentioned earlier that you, you broke the 500 game barrier with, with, with your software. Uh, what does that mean to a, to a gamer? I mean, what, what, is, what does the NVIDIA GeForce 3D Vision software do, uh, and why is that number so important? So there's two ways of implementing 3D into gaming. Uh, you can start from scratch and redesign your software to generate multiple images. It's uh, something that is requiring a lot of investment from the software companies. They have the choice. Do they take a game that's already in the market and try to spend almost as much time to redesign it for 3D, or they design a new game? Well, the approach that we have is done at the driver level. So as a graphics card, uh, we receive the information from the software, from the game. So we have all of the mathematical data to generate one image. So we kind of cheat. We receive the first image and we generate the second one before asking for the next frame by changing the position of the camera inside of the, the, the generation of the image and then displays it in stereoscopic and then ask for the next game and so and so. The advantage with that is that the game does not have to be kind of rewritten to do so. And even some game manufacturers that are no more into in business have some of their games now working in 3D because it's automatically done at the driver level. Good. Now, uh, another point, I think this is another reason to congratulate you today. Um, you have the NVIDIA glasses, which of course are, are bound to NVIDIA 3D Vision drivers, uh, but there's a lot of other 3D solutions in the market, 3D HDTVs and displays. May, I understand you have an additional software option for, for those types of displays as well. So correct, uh, 3D Vision has been designed to enable uh, PC components to work in 3D, but we also made a software that is available as a standalone uh, product that allows you to connect your PC 
uh, to a regular HDMI 1.4 3D TV. So in case you want to have something bigger, or something you want to use in your living room, then through an HDMI 1.4 connection, our software will be able to talk to any, pretty much any of those uh, 3D TVs available in the market from Panasonic, Samsung, Sony, and others. Okay, excellent. And there's also a number of projectors. I mean, what's growing very big these days isn't just televisions, but people will buy projectors. So I gather anything that's HDMI 1.4 compliant, will it work with the 3D TV Play software? Uh, anything might be a strong word, but most of the HDMI 1.4 uh, display devices, uh, 3D TVs would, uh, and projector would do so. Uh, some of them may, uh, may not for some technical reasons, but it's, it's a good uh, general concept, yes. And, uh, the good point about the projector because uh, some people they uh, see the projector as a kind of uh, intermediate way in terms of budget to get access to a large display 3D. Uh, projectors, 3D projectors can be purchased for about the thousand dollars and this is much cheaper than a four or three thousand dollar 3D TV and it also gives you a wider uh, the display area on in your living room. Now something uh, a little bit of a challenge in the industry right now is with HDMI the NVIDIA drivers, and this goes for the other solutions as well, they do extremely well at 720p, 1280 by 720p, because you could get like a full frame per second and so on. Now, we had the opportunity, we interviewed Steve Venuti, president of HDMI, and he mentioned that there's a bit of a challenge now with the silicon, that there has to be enough performance to transmit the full bandwidth that the TV is capable of in 3D. Do you have any ideas when we'll start to see a, a break in the barrier of the 720p world for, for gaming on, on HDTVs? So that's a good point. Uh, to, because of the HDMI connectivity and those silicones used on those 3D TVs, it is limited to 720p 60 frames per second or 1080 24 frames per second uh, this uh, is due to the this is due to the, uh, tra the transfer rate of the standard we could generate the PCs actually can generate at much higher frequencies and resolution we've done it on a regular PC display so this is something we do not control we hope that this will move into that direction that the, uh, the display component on the 3d TV side will do the move in that direction because we can then use more of the power that the GPU can render as of when this is going to happen I think your guess is as good as mine because we, this is not really something we control ourselves well the good news is is if we were to compare PC to the console market, like, you know, let's say Sony and Xbox, they're already rendering, well, they currently render at 720p as well. So this isn't so unusual. It's just for the PC world. We know we can do better. Exactly. We, know we, can, we know there's something you're leaving down on the plate, so we, could, we would like people to take advantage of it. But again, even at 720p, PC has a lot of advantages with visual quality and so on. Yes, definitely. Excellent. Well, we're going to speak with you a little more, okay? But thanks for speaking with us. Uh, we've been talking to Patrick Bolio from in NVIDIA. We'll be back with more at CES 2011.